Hello and welcome. This lesson is going to be a star review on exponential functions in order to help you prepare for the star test. Something you need to remember about exponential functions is that there are two types of exponential function. One where the graph is increasing from left to right, or in other words, going up from left to right, and that is called the growth. The other graph is the one that is decreasing from left to right or going down from left to right, and that's called decay. Now, both exponential functions have the following format. You, sh you always have a number outside the parentheses multiplying a number inside the parentheses raised to the x. So if you notice right there, same thing happens here. A number outside times a number inside the parentheses raised to the x. Now the difference between this one, which is increasing, and this one, which is decreasing, is that the number inside the parentheses, which is the rate, we call this rate, the rate is greater than 1 for growth, and for decay, the rate is less than 1. So if it's increasing, is greater than 1, and if it's decreasing, is less than 1. Now, the, the rate could come as a decimal or a fraction. A decimal is very easy to say that is bigger than 1, because 1 1.5 is bigger than 1. Now for a fraction, if the number on top is bigger than the bottom, then this fraction is bigger than 1. And if the number on top is less than the bottom, then the rate is going to be less than 1. Also, you can always put in the calculator 3 divided by 2, and it, it will tell you that it's 1.5, and 2 divided by 3 is 0.33333. All right, let's talk about this number outside the parentheses. This is what we call the initial value. It's also the y-intercept. So if you notice right there, this is what we call the initial value, which is, in this case right here, we can see that is a 2, and it matches the equation. Same thing here. Here's the initial value, and here's the initial value 2 on the graph. So please remember, the number outside is the y-intercept, or initial value, the number inside is your rate, and if that rate is bigger than 1, the graph is increasing, and if that number inside the parentheses is less than 1, then it is decreasing. With that in mind, let's go ahead and look at some actual start questions from previous years. For example, here we have one of the questions from the 2019 star algebra 1 test. And the problem says an exponential function is graphed on the grid. Which function is best represented by the graph? Well, here we have four multiple choices, four equations. And which one of these represents this graph? Well, first of all, I noticed that these guys have a minus. And remember, exponential function is a number multiply by another number inside a parentheses raised to the x. So right there, I know that it's not going to be letter C, no letter D. It's going to be either be num letter A or B. Now, because my graph is decreasing, I know that the number inside the parentheses or the rate have to be less than 1. And, well, 3 is not less than 1. And one third is 0.333, so that's my answer right there. Now, please remember that you also have a calculator, and you can double check in case you forget if how the graph looks like. So let's go ahead and enter that equation. So y equals six parentheses one divided by three raised to the x. All right, so now I have the graph, and the graph looks like this one. It looks like a decreasing graph. And if I make it a closer view, the graph is going to even look much like the one that is right there. Okay, so with certainty, I know that the answer is going to be letter A. 
All right, let's go on to the next problem, number two. The next one says, which graph best represents the function f of x equals 2 times 5 raised to the x? So let's make it a little bit bigger here. All right, let's remember that the number outside is the y-intercept. And if I look at the first graph here, that looks like a y-intercept of 2. This one also looks like a 2. Now this one definitely is not a 2, so I know that letter H can be eliminated. And this one also can be eliminated because here's the y-intercept is 5. So that my choice is going to be either F or G. Now please remember you have a calculator, so let's take a look on the, on the graph. So what I can do is change this to a 2, and I'll change this to a 5. And right there, I can see that the graph looks like that. Now, one thing that I like to do is I like to look at the value of 1. And if you notice right there, at value of 1, the graph has a height of 10. Here, at the value of 1, as a height of 5. Let's look at our graph on the calculator. Okay, and if you want to add labels here, you can. You just click right here, unclick the minor grid lines, enter step 1 in step 1, and when you click on the calculator, you'll be able to see all the labels there. And so at value 1, when I go up, I can see that I'm touching right there, which is a height of 10 right there. So that means my answer is going to be letter F. So letter G, it is incorrect. Because this high, right here is height 5, and this one is height 10. And we know that this is going to be height 10. So my answer for number 2 is letter F. So let's go ahead and enter that. All right, very good. Let's go on to the next problem. Next problem, off the bat, I can see that I'm going to have exponential functions because I see this as my multiple choice. And I'm given a table. And I see on the question that says, which function represents the same relationship? Well, I always like to look at the y-intercept first. So I see that the y-intercept here is 15, and here it says is 18. Same here, 18, and here's 15. How do I find the y-intercept on the table? You just look to the, for the zero. The number that is next to the zero is your y-intercept. In this case, I see that my y-intercept is 18. So that means I can eliminate letter A and letter C because they both have y-intercept of 15. So that means my answer is going to either be B or D. One thing I notice is that the numbers here are increasing. As the number of x increases, the, the number of y increases. So that means that my rate needs to be bigger than 1. And remember what I said, if the number on top is bigger than the bottom, that's going to be bigger than 1. Okay, And if, if it's smaller on top than the bottom one number, then it's going to be less than 1. If you don't remember on the, the day of the test, you can always punch it in the calculator. 6 divided by 5 equals 1.2. So because these numbers are increasing, I want a number that is bigger than 1, so I know my answer is going to be letter B. Now, please remember that you have a calculator, and you can double-check your work. You can enter this multiple choice that you chose, you can enter the fraction there, 6 divided by 5. Once you have that, you can enter the table. And then you want to make sure that these values are the same as here. And if they are, you need to check this. Did the, are these numbers the same? Yes, they are. So that means this function is correct. So for sure, I know my answer is letter B. Okay, very good. Let's go on to the next problem. 
The next problem, off the bat, I see that is exponential because I see the little x right there. So I know that this is going to be my initial value, and this is going to be my rate. And the big question is, which statement is best, the best interpretation of one of the values in this function? So it basically says letter F, the initial balance of the account decreases at a rate of 97.5% each year. Well, the multiple choice here says decrease, and I look over here, and this number is bigger than 1. So that's incorrect, because if it's bigger than 1, that means I'm going to have an increasing function. Okay, let's look at letter G. The balance in the account increases at a rate of 2.5%. Now, when increases, and it's talking about rate, and you have a percentage, first of all, you need to change the percentage to a decimal, and we do that by moving the decimal place one, two decimal places to the left. So that means the decimal point is going to be there, and you're going to put in zeros. Once you have changed the, the percentage into decimal, then you're going to either add one or subtract. Well, the multiple choice says increases at a rate of 2.5. So that means you're going to add this. And that means the rate of the exponential function should be this. 1.025. So that's what this multiple choice is saying. And if you notice right there, the equation has the same rate. So that means this is a very good answer. Now let's double check the other ones, okay? The initial balance of the account was 1825 Well, the initial amount was 850 So I know for sure that that's not correct. We also learned that letter F was not correct. Let's look at letter J. The balance in the account at the end of one year is 850 What we can do is, let's go to the calculator. And click there, click there, and I'm going to enter this equation, so it'll be 850, and then parenthesis 1.025, close parenthesis, raised to, now it says here one year, so I'm going to put one, and according to this, I should have $871 in the account, at the end of one year. And here the multiple choice says 850. So that is incorrect. So for sure, I know that the answer is going to be letter G. So I enter letter G and now let's go on to the next problem. Okay, this is from 2018 star test. And I see this is going to have exponential functions because I see the little x. And the problem says there are 1,024 players in a tennis tournament. So that basically is your starting value. And they all have the same initial value there. Now it says in each round, half of the players are eliminated. So that means this is decreasing. And it's decreasing by half, which is 1 over 2 which is equal to 0 0.5. Now, remember rate. You have this decreasing by 0.5. You always put a 1, 1 minus 0 0.5. That means the rate is 0 0.5. So that means your function is the initial value, which is 1,024 times the rate, which is 0.5 raised to the x. And if you notice right there, these are increasing functions because it's bigger than 1, so I know that's not it. And the one that is like the one I wrote is letter B. So my answer is letter B. Let's go on to the next problem. Okay, next problem, I also spot that this is going to be exponential. As I see this, I pretty much can bet that this is not going to be the answer because um, this is very strange to have decimals right there. But in any way, 
I can see right there that I have probably have an initial value right there, even without reading the problem, okay? And I have a percentage right there. And remember, every time you see percentage, you want to move the decimal place. I'm going to go one, two, and right there is your you your percentage in decimal. And so now we need to decide if we're going to add or subtract. So let's see, in year 1900, the total number of metric tons of copper produced in the world was 495,000. Each year since 1900, the total number of metric tons of copper produced has increased. Ah, here's a keyword, increase. Okay, on average of 3.25%. So right there, I have 1.0325. So that's going to be my rate. So my equation is the initial value, which is 495,000. In open parentheses, 1.0325 raised to the x. So that means my answer will be letter A. So there you go. It's going to be letter A. So this concludes this video lesson. Thank you very much for your time. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. And now you can do the assignment. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.